Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, make sure you check out the Potown store. You can get a 5% discount on your orders using the code OmniPoke. For today's video, we are going over the buy list for Darkness Ablaze. I always like to do this upon a new set, and although there's not a huge need for the physical cards right now as tournaments are still not back, I think this could still be a useful video for those of you who actually still want to go out and buy the physical cards, or just for your own PTCGO collection needs. So we'll start off with the core essentials. Uh, these are going to be cards that I expect to be involved in tier 1 or 2 decks, or have obvious future potential. We'll start off in the top left corner with the trainer cards, and I think Turbo Patch really hits that sweet spot of being both probably in a tier 1 or 2 contender, as well as having future potential. This honestly is going to be a very strong card, providing universal energy acceleration to anything that isn't a GX just seems very good. There's a lot of basic Vs that are going to want to take advantage of this, things like Zacian, Zamazenta, uh, Vika Volt V as well, and potentially even some VMAX decks may look to have this in the deck to counter Crushing Hammer, so fighting coin flips with coin flips, which is kind of meme -y, um, but also gives you a bit of leeway if you miss turn 1 energy drops and stuff, so I've actually seen a handful of VMAX decks also work in Turbo Patch, or even just things like Eternatus V adding in things like Sableye, um, to have answers to Zamazenta a little bit easier. So Turbo Patch not only for like the basic V decks, I could see it going into a few of these VMAX builds as well. Um, and even in some GX lists alongside uh, Energy Switch. So ADP could definitely be playing the Turbo Patch route in addition to their sources these days. So comes into the format with a lot of homes and it's going to be experimented with a bunch more as well. For stadiums, we have a couple really nice interesting ones. The Spikemuth Stadium is probably going to be the only saving grace for Spiritomb players going forward, seeing as they, they are losing uh, through rotation the Rainbow Energy and the Hustle Belt. So it's looking more towards the Spikemuth and the Toughness Cape to be the new era of Spiritomb based builds. I do think that will probably uh, be the only way that it remains relevant. But I also think there's a few uh, spread-based attackers that can also take advantage of Spike Move. I've tried it out in Salamence VMAX as well as in Teleon VMAX uh, to reasonable success. Uh, to start punishing things like Jirachi, which is still a decent card in this format. Uh, Rose Tower is an interesting one. I don't actually have this in any of my current deck lists right now, so it's basically here for exactly future potential. Seeing as though there were times when uh, Oranguru was just the go-to tech card in certain decks, especially those that are aggressors, so that you could play around reset stamps and ends, uh, I feel like Rose Tower could find his way into a bunch of decks as well. For that similar purpose, any... Uh, decks that don't have type specific stadium uh, that they need to have, especially like one prizer decks right now, uh, may want to have Rose Tower just to be that stamp proofing mechanism if they are going to be the aggressor. Um, because Jirachi is still excellent as an early game card, uh, but in the late game it's not quite as safe as it used to be because you don't have that escape board. Now Jirachi is much more looking towards like exactly Professor's research and then the research gets you your switch card plus all the other outs. So having something like Rose Tower in here, just to give you those few extra top-ups, um, you know, before that research, or before the Stellar Wish, could definitely put you in good stead. So at the moment, I'm not playing in much, uh, but I can definitely see the potential here, seeing as though that Aranguru was a nice one-card tech in a bunch of different decks. Rose Tower, obviously a bit more niche and narrow, so it's in here mainly for the speculation um, of its future potential. For tools, uh, Big Parasol is extremely versatile, and again, I don't think it's going to really hit the ground running, uh, at the moment, there's only really a couple of effects that you want to be blocking uh, from your opponent's attacks, like Raichu Raichu's Paralysis, or um, the Special Energy Discard from Zamazenta, and there's a few other pieces here and there. But ultimately, the versatility of Parasol, and looking back to previous cards like Unknown G, or even things like the Stealthy Hood, which does have a different text to the Parasol, but it just shows that it covers so much that eventually it will see play in the format. I'm pretty sure of that, um, so I'd be picking up a few copies of this for sure. Toughness Cape, I also think three copies sounds very good. Uh, potentially even four if you are thinking of playing uh, like a Quad Spiritomb Hooper base build. Um, but I also feel this will find a home in many basic V decks. I think Luke Metalization, especially with the loss of Frying Pan, uh, will want to be playing these Toughness Capes because putting your Zamazentas and Zations into, you know, that almost like 300 range of hit points after you've used a Luke Metal GX attack is going to make them very tanky and annoying to deal with. I also think Vika Vault is definitely going to look towards playing these Toughness Capes um, unless they are going to continue with Giant Bombs, which was also an option that we saw in some of the Japanese players' lists. So something to look forward to, 
uh, trying to make these Vika Vaults, you know, stay out of range. But at the same time, I can see this being very strong alongside those tombs. And it again, just screams future potential. Yes, it's a passive tool and we have Tool Scrapper in the format. But for now, I'm at least envisioning that there's going to be enough V Max decks out there that people are just going to allow Toughness Cape to get its value for the most part. Um, because a lot of these V Max decks don't have space to put in Tool Scrapper in the first place. And there'll be other things on their mind to deal with. For supporters, Piers is a really interesting one. I think there's an option for him to be an Eternatus, but more I've played more decks right now um, without the Eternatus deck that's playing Piers, if that makes sense. He's just a very versatile card. I think um, Guzma Haller being the only other option to find special energy in the format is going to get way less useful because a lot of the tag teams are getting hit by stuff from rotation, and Eternatus VMAX's just raw damage output pushes the majority of tag teams out of the format. So I really think only ADP and Luke Metal will be like the relevant VMAX, uh, sorry, the re relevant tag teams in the format, which naturally just makes the tag call package a lot worse and naturally makes Guz Haller a lot worse. So I think Piers being the go to sort of special energy search um, is going to be really nice. Um, we've seen that already. I've tried it in Salamance builds. I've tried it in a handful of other decks out there as well. Seeing as though it can just give you access to Crobat Vs for draw at the same time, or uh, Glarian Zigzagoon, and even uh, the Evil Admonition Hooper, all decent cards in this format for sure. So Rose just picking those up here and there is going to be a really nice option. So I'd say pick up the three copies because I can see it being like this small package within decks. It's like a one or two count as you play some Bats and Zigzagoons on top. Um, but even in Eternatus, I don't think this will be a four count because... At the end of the day, Research and Marnie are so good. So I think just pick up three copies and you'll be happy. Rose, um, I've tried a lot out with the Rose engine actually. Most successfully with Inteleon so far. Uh, but also with some Stone Journer to be like a counter to Eternatus, which is quite fun. Um, but Rose definitely is one of these cards that also screams future potential. We're going to get more and more VMAXs coming out uh, that don't have, you know, type-specific acceleration. And Rose is going to be the only option to try and get some of these chunkier ones rolling. So I do think if you are leaning into a Rose engine, you probably want to have maximum copies of this because I think the main idea of trying to use Rose is to try and hit your VMAX on turn two, combine it with that Rose and just get your attacker rolling from nowhere. So that's the real core intention of the Rose. So you've got to max copies out of him uh, to try and make that happen. Birdkeeper as well. Um, I think he's just versatile enough for me to have in the binder. Uh, I think oftentimes he'll only be supplementary to the regular counts of Marnies and Researches and whatnot. But I think there might be enough attackers in the game right now that have that sort of downside that force you to switch. For example, Salamance VMAX needs resetting, Zacian needs resetting, even just having more outs to Stellar Wish in general seems very reasonable. So Birdkeeper may find its way into one or two archetypes. Also the Hoopers, uh, for example, even trying to use Birdkeeper to give yourself extra Spike Muff procs if you're playing the Spiritomb deck. Some very niche things here and there, but I'd pick up these Bird Keepers just because I feel like they are pretty reasonable. You don't necessarily need to play, uh, get the full four, but they're not going to be expensive, let's be honest. Uh, for the special energies, um, I think all of these are potentially going straight into decks, but also um, have a huge amount of potential. Powerful colorless energy, having that same text as strong energy, but for colorless Pokemon makes it extremely versatile. And there were certainly formats where strong energy were ruling the game. And I can foresee powerful colorless, you know, at the moment only having homes ready with Salamance. Um, and maybe some tech includes if you're playing like welder decks that's happened to have like cramorants or doubles or something uh, Maybe some defensive double decks. We've seen a few Miss Magius uh, based doubles right now uh, on the ladder at least um, So powerful colors not a huge amount of homes right now But as more cards get released it becomes more versatile and dangerous the high darkness energy definitely could be going in this Hooper Spiritomb uh, non GX deck Definitely can be going in the Eternatus VMAX deck as well. So it comes out the gate as an excellent include for a bunch of things. The Heat Fire Energy seems very decent with Senti Scorch if you are building a sort of defensive build with uh, potential healing options and combining it with Big Charm. I've also tried a few of the tankier regular V Pokemon out there. For example, the new Houndoom V that we'll talk about later or even Torkoal. Combining Heat Fire Energy and Toughness Cape just gives them a huge buff of hit points and it makes them really annoying. Uh, I think the Torkoal one is the most fun, and I actually want to profile one of those decks quite soon, which is going to be interesting for sure, because I haven't seen many people talk about Torkoal since its initial release, to be honest. Uh, but it does gain, you know, a huge amount of hit point buff, if nothing else. Uh, onto the Pokemon now. Vikavolt V is giving, you know, is being given a huge amount of praise right now in the format, and I'm kind of jumping onto that bandwagon and saying you should go out and get four copies, but... 
ultimately, I don't. I think this is more towards a tier two contender than a tier one contender from my initial playtesting. Um, but I still think he's going to be strong. Uh, there's still potential for more lightning support to come out. You know, we've just lost basically all of the lightning support apart from speed lightning and uh, Coco. Um, from rotation, so it won't be long until Lightning will get another like small amount of support. And let's be honest, it was very, very dominant in the Japanese meta where it came out. And yes, it had Electro Power, but not much else changes really because they weren't playing. Well, they were playing Thunder Mountain as well. Let's be honest, but uh, we can um, make up for Thunder Mountain by Turbo Patches, for example. We can't really make up for the Electro Power quite as easily. Um, I've seen people talk about uh, adding an Arctozolt or Flapple, for example. These all make me kind of nervous and will probably take up a lot more spaces than Electro Powers will. Um, which is the real reason why I'm expecting this to be more towards that Tier 2 contention. Um, but at the end of the day, it is still Item Lock and this can find a way uh, to work in the format. It also is kind of dependent on how many um, decks are going to be like one prize base as well. I feel like Vault will probably slap around the likes of Spiritomb and the likes of like Baby Blacephalon, which are both like quite item focused. Um, and if you can trap enough things with Boss's Orders and Absols or even uh, Gala Mines, um, you can build up enough Vika Volts, buy enough time, take some easy prize cards, and then build up those Super Zap Cannons. So I'm by no means like dunking on Vika Volt, but I don't expect it to be the huge threat that it was in the Japanese meta. But that being said, if you guys still like Item Lock, I can definitely foresee this deck uh, being solidly in Tier 2 and really being an annoying deck to play against no matter what. The Dark stuff is probably the most impressive uh, of the sort of uh, support that we get uh, from this set. Hooper being that non-GX card I think is very nice at slotting straight into Eternatus uh, for giving you a one energy attacking presence against a lot of decks. I've seen a lot of people talk about just playing Evil Admonition as well, but I still value that solid base of 90 uh, being very decent at getting over, you know, Jirachis and evolving Pokemon just straight out of the gate, which is very cool. Uh, this can also be a saving grace and a backup attacker for Spiritomb going forward. So I think three is pretty much the exact count that I'll be looking to buy. For Crobat V, I would say two copies if you're not looking to play Eternatus and bump that straight up to four if you want to play the Eternatus VMAX. Crobat is a good enough card to be played in a bunch of decks. I've already talked about that mini Piers engine going on uh, for a few decks that are playing some important special energy cards. Um, but even without Piers, Crobat can be alongside the Dene's instead of the Dene's based on what you're playing. Um, you know, because it just naturally has uh, more raw hit points, isn't a great catcher target. And um, yeah, just seems to be a solid card in general where you're not wanting to have this card in your list. Uh, so Crobat is, you know, sometimes alongside, sometimes instead of the Dene. Uh, so two copies definitely seems reasonable to me. But if you're playing Eternatus VMAX, you need that full four because that ability is too important for Eternatus because it has no other draw options uh, from abilities. If you're playing Eternatus, you want to max out both copies. You can see for all the VMAXs, I'm sorry guys, but the best way I want to play VMAXs is going to be playing maximum copies because Marnie is still ever present in the format and all of these V Pokemon do like very, very little until they hit that VMAX. So hitting that stage one always has to be the priority and that's why I think if you are going to commit to any of these archetypes I will always be looking to play maximum copies of these. We learned our lesson from uh, playing Dragapult back in Rebel Clash and I'm going to stick to that philosophy uh, unless we get you know some alternate ball search that makes me think that we can go down to three copies. Um, so at the moment I'm saying every VMAX, whichever one you like, I'm not saying you have to go out and pick all like by you know, the four of each of these, like, play test, pick your favorite, and then commit to the 4-4 line of your favorite one of those, uh, because otherwise it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. So yeah, just be careful of that. But whichever one takes your fancy, go out and buy the 4-4 and commit to the line, in my opinion. The Eternatus obviously looking like uh, the most powerful in terms of raw damage output and speed. Uh, but Senti Scorch VMAX also has like a really good cult following because its matchup spread seems very, very solid. And I'm also a believer of Senti Scorch. I think it's one of those decks that doesn't really go into any match uh, thinking that it just instantly loses. It's not really walled by anything and that's very appealing for players. Uh, the only small worry would be potentially um, a gap in the format for Frostmoth because it's previously been kept out of the game really by things like Dragapult just sniping Snoms and the fact that Picarom had weakness on the majority of um, water-based attackers. Um, but I do feel like there might be a small surge of water decks coming into this format 
especially with uh, Keldeo's GX attack being very, very solid against Eternatus as well. Uh, something to bear in mind. Uh, but yeah, Center Scorcher at the moment doesn't have a lot of challenges to it, and I feel like it's very safe in the format. Salamence VMAX as well, bursting with potential. All sorts of ways you can play this. You can play Welder Base, you can go Stage 2 with Porygon Z, or you can check out uh, one of my recent videos for a Triple Acceleration Energy uh, like straight Salamance list that has no real support other than the Salamance himself and a few other tech attackers, uh, which I also think has a lot of potential. Onto the Believer buy list now. These are cards that may prove themselves to be mid-tier contenders or have a good amount of potential. We'll start off with Decidueye, and Decidueye was probably the closest one that I was going to put on the previous slide, um, but I just can't put myself... I can't really see this being a tier 2 contender. I can see it being more towards that tier 3 presence in the game because I think at the moment um, ADP Zation playing um, some, uh, what are they called, Duraludons or even Luke Metal playing Duraludons, um, any other like energy removal, like stalling base list is going to uh, put Decidueye to the sword. And I feel like um, also Center Scorch is going to probably keep this deck down and any other welder decks that survive will probably keep Decidueye down. So I think really you're only trying to target like Eternatus, but even then they could play like a higher number of um, the uh, Hoopers and stuff. So Decidueye is like a very maybe archetype for me. It feels like it's only really when people are under respecting it that it's going to do well in formats. Um, so I feel like it's never going to be in the higher echelons because it's just not good enough to... Um, deal with people who are teching for you basically so i believe it's going to be more in that mid tier but pick them up if you do believe in them same thing for the mad party archetype again i was pretty close to putting these onto the previous slide not because i think they will be like tier two when they come out but i also fear that similar to night march this archetype just came into the game and then got extra support later down the line and it became pretty reasonable uh so um the mad party could definitely go that way as well and it's a lot of fun to play and at the end of the day this archetype at least is basically all commons and uncommons so it's not going to be difficult for you guys to pick these up and speculate on them for future same thing for the look about like bell i wouldn't pick any of this trainer up unless i was uh, leaning towards the mad party approach and even if you are playing mad party this isn't necessarily a trainer that you do need to play Gradient seems very interesting. It is hit and run. It does come to the hand, which is, you know, uh, pretty safe, I would say. And there are some decent walls in the format. We still have Lily's Polka Dolls. Amazenta is looking a lot more promising. Um, but I'm just so skeptical of its damage output that I couldn't put it any further. But I know a lot of people are trying some hit and run stuff. Stunfist could be a new wall that could go in Luke Metal, which is interesting. Glimmer Tangle I'm having a lot of fun with right now uh, for some coin flip shenanigans. Uh, and if you are trying any of these coin flip decks, uh, you're going to want a full four count to lean into it as much as possible. Mimikyu is a nice one count if you are going to look to stop things like Malolana. I've thought about adding this into Vika Vault, especially if you're going down the trapping route. Um, so at least they can't get that heal. They can still do the switch effect, but they just can't heal uh, from the Malolana, which is reasonable. Um, I've also thought that potentially things like Dragapult, if that's going to stick around, you'll probably think about putting this Mimikyu in as a tech card. Charizard VMAX I think is far, far worse than Center Scorch, uh, but if you are looking to flex and use that big Zard to swing for 300, by all means commit to him. Houndoom V I think is very interesting, but probably just a little too clunky to be working. So again, this is why I call it the Believer buy list. There's like potential power behind a lot of these cards, but I just think how often they're going to work is the real reason why they're on this slide instead of the first one. Uh, Glarian Slowbro V I think is a decent card actually and we're just like a floatstone away from this card being like very very solid as like a tech in a lot of decks because uh, it can just put poison on things and the moment the only real home I'm seeing is if you're playing some like Kartana Glimwood Tangle uh, shenanigans uh, or if you're just looking for an extra damage mod in Eternatus and you play like a very high switch count already uh, like four <laughs> for example uh, so that's really all I'm thinking there Ariados, again, I think as more VMAX has come out, uh, its ability, Spider-Net, is going to become more useful and potentially useful enough to be in the list um, for Eternatus, but right now I don't think it's strong enough to go in. Hydrogen, it's uh, Rain Dance, uh, but it is a stage two. We've seen Frostmoth struggle to make it into our format with a different form of Rain Dance uh, on a stage one, which makes me very cynical, but if we get extra you know, energy support that can give us access to dark energies or recovery of dark energies 
or if we have um, some better dark basic attackers that we could take advantage of, Hydrogen might be worth looking into. Corviknight as well, I think is a very interesting ability. It probably won't be working out too well at the moment, uh, but it has that core potential because, again, as more VMAXs come out, uh, there'll be more targets for this to be uh, useful with, I would say. Glissapod has that very nice twin energy style attack going on. I don't think he can really be the face of his own deck because your opponent can play around its maximum damage output. But if there is going to be a twin energy box in the future, Glissapod will probably feature in it. Toxtricity might be one of the only ways we can actively mill our opponent these days with a Rangaroo uh, rotating. Uh, so if you want to try and play Toxtricity with twin energies and Glimwood Tangles, by all means, uh, go for it. Dunsparce as well, uh, again, maybe a card that mill players can use, just having Dunsparce with Cursed Shovels in the active, uh, forcing your opponent to take their prizes, but also get punished for it at the same time, whilst you're doing, you know, uh, disruption things in the background, or active milling with Belelba Bryson Man. If you're looking towards playing those no energy bird keeper base lists, you're going to want those Rowlets that I've put next to the Decidueye, as well as the Starlies and the Swanners, and the Ducklets in the back. And uh, if you are trying to build the fossil stuff, again, Arctazolt, I think a few people are trying to build as a sort of like bench sitting damage mod for, you know, some basic V Pokemon, for example. Um, the one thing I would say is that we've seen things like Galarian Perserker just completely not work. And that's even when we have like Zacian, one of the best attackers in the game available. And the Meowth has a very, very good ability that can guarantee those Perserkers quickly. So having a very ugly searchable, um, like, rare fossil like way worse than most basic pokemon and then just having these arc results and then your opponent is still in control of where they're attaching most of the time that's where i am skeptical of arc result dracovish as well has again this sort of headache of an ability but not necessarily good enough to um warrant a full deck to be built around it it's things that your opponent can still boss around the dracovish uh, for example or just 1v1 you because you only do 120 damage for three and that's not necessarily great I've tried to be quite strict on this Believer buy list. There are still some, you know, trainers and stuff that I just don't advise buying at all. Um, so if there is anything that I did miss on the buy list, do let me know. Put it all in the comments down below. Do you think I was correct in putting the Believer stuff here? Do you think any of it deserves to be on the other slide? What are you going to be investing in for the set? Are you going to keep it all online until tournaments reopen? I will hear it all in the discussion down below, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in another video tomorrow. Cheers.